Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're taking a look here at the HGUC Gundam Delta Kai. This is a kit that I've been wanting to try out for a long time. It came out all the way back in 2012, so it's not new at this point by any means. Based off of the HGUC uh, Delta Plus, and then they made the Delta, and then they made the Gundam Delta Kai here. So this is a very cool version of that. It has this gigantic shield, this really cool gigantic beam rifle. It's got the funnels on the back and just overall really cool styling there with the white and the purple and yellow accents. I really like this design and the transformed state of it also is one of the more cool looking uh, transformed Gundams I think. So really looking forward to checking out this kit. This came out at uh, number 148 in the HGUC line uh, along with the Unicorn MSV series of HGUC kits. So the Unicorn HG kits are all pretty, pretty cool. Pretty fun in my opinion, the ones that I've built and the MSV ones are also really cool as well. So here we got just a front and back look at the kit. As you can see, he's got a lot going on back here. And so it's a pretty busy looking design, but I like it, I think it looks pretty cool. All the text in this case is all in Japanese as this came out before they started doing English on the boxes. Unfortunately, over here, we got a couple illustrations. So a nice illustration of the uh, Wave Rider mode and just the mobile suit mode. Let's go around here onto the other side. This would be the top of the box got a little bit about here this is showing the MS and the Wave Rider mode and it's got uh, of course part swapping parts for that so those of you guys who don't like part swapping transformations personally I don't mind it at all so you're gonna have part swapping included with this of course to transform it now uh, you've got a couple of stands for the funnels which is pretty cool they're very little tiny little stand things here that are included but it's kind of cool if you wanted to have those displayed, you can at least kind of stand them next to the Gundam or something. Uh, here's just showing it looks like how the beam saber handles pull out of there. You've got this uh, separate part there for the shield, the weapons, the beam rifle, and the beam sabers. And then over here is just showing the Delta Plus, the Delta Kai, and the Delta Gundam. They're all posed up together. Looking very cool. 2,600 yen for the list price for this, which is a little bit high for a high grade, but as you can see, it's a pretty big box. We've got a good amount of plastic in here. Well, that said, I'm assuming we're going to have a handful of leftover parts as well. So we'll see when we get a look at the manual here momentarily. This does have a lot of stickers. That's one thing I did know about this kit ahead of time. I knew it was kind of notorious for having a really big sticker sheet there. So a lot of color correcting stickers for this. Yeah, we've got a lot of runners in here. Let's find our way down to the manual if we can. It's down here at the bottom. As usual, with this being an HGUC kit, we've just got a nice big uh, reference photo here of the painted kit on the front. And while I really like the design, I can't help feeling that this particular version of the, the design, the proportions really aren't the best. I think the head is maybe a little bit big and the, the torso is maybe a little bit short, I think, or somewhere it's a little bit short and kind of stubby looking. I think it needs to be a little bit longer and the head ideally maybe a little bit smaller or something. But anyway, it's something to maybe work on in the future. Uh, let's go around here to the back of the manual. There's the Wave Rider mode. Uh, and I don't think that this comes with a stand included for the actual kit. I don't believe so. It's got the little stands there, or maybe just one or two. I don't know. Yeah, two for the, for the funnels, but no stand for the actual kit as far as I know. So a little bit more information down here and then the color guide there at the bottom. Putting it up, we do have some more stuff. Again, it's all in Japanese, but some cool images there of some of the weapons, the mobile suit there posed up in the pose, basically what's featured on the front of the box. I will say though, while I mentioned about the proportions being maybe not quite right on this, when it's posed up, you can't really notice. I think it looks a lot more, a lot, a lot better when it's just in a, a action pose rather than just standing up. And then again, just about the Delta Plus and the Delta Gundam there at the bottom. And a really cool shot. I don't think I've ever seen this before of it kind of like having this glow coming off of it. What's the deal with that? I'm guessing this is just from the manga, but I don't know if you guys know more about this particular image, what's going on with that. I actually don't know too much about the backstory of this Gundam actually. I've never read the manga and yeah, so I just don't really know much about it. I just thought it's a cool design. You know, here to the parts list, we can see we've got, uh, yeah, a good handful of extra parts there from the B, C, and D runner and E, just a handful of leftover parts. Nothing really too extreme. It's just all in all through the construction, as you can see, pretty busy looking manual here. It's all kind of packed in pretty tight and yeah, just a lot of parts to go together. So it's got a lot of construction and all of that. And then I think we're back on to the color pages here, which is where it will go into the transformation. So the, all of that is covered here on the two color pages and then just how to mount the weapons onto the transformed state. So that's all there. Let's go ahead and get a look at all the runners. 
All right, so once again, here's that massive sticker sheet and you can see up there we've got a couple of normal stickers as you would expect for the eyes and for the sensors up there in green. And then just a mass of purple and yellow black stickers there, a couple of gray ones as well. So it's gonna be a very sticker heavy kit. We've got SB6 for our 144 scale beam saber effect parts here in clear pink. These are the shorter type ones. So kind of interesting that we have this uh, Gundam with all of this big equipment and then it's got the smaller version of the beam sabers. But I think these were pretty common among the uh, HGUC unicorn HG kits. And then PC132 for our polycaps here just in standard gray. All right, and the A runner starting off with the nice big white runner here of all new parts for the Delta Kai. One thing that is really slightly noticeable on here is that there's a really, really slight tint of purple to this white, so that's really cool. Another interesting thing to note is the label on the runner actually says Gundam Delta Kai, all spelled out in katakana, which is strange because Kai, they usually use a special kanji for that. There's a kanji for Kai. So maybe it's just because the English name for this is Delta Kai, so they just kept it as Kai in, in uh, katakana instead of kanji for that. I don't know, interesting. Anyway, moving on to the B runner here. This one is also in white, but these parts are from the Delta Plus. So if you built that kit, anyway, this should be familiar to you. Runner C as well, more white parts from the Delta Plus. And again, just a reminder that the Delta Plus originally came out in 2010. So while this kit came out two years later, uh, the majority of the, like some of the parts and like the joint parts and frame parts, that kind of stuff is all from the Delta Plus, which came out two years before this one. Runner D here is some of those gray parts there for the weapons and some joint parts, frame parts, that kind of stuff, hand parts and all this is all still from the Delta Plus. And the same thing here for runner E as well, but this runner is an ABS plastic. Then we got runner F1 here is back to some more white parts as this is a new runner for the kit. So this is parts specifically for the Delta Kai. And then we've got a copy of this half of the runner over here for runner F2. Runner G is back to some more gray parts. You can see the new weapons parts for the rifle on there as well. This one is for the Delta Kai, so another new runner. Runner H as well, more new parts here in that really cool purple color that we've got for this. So obviously a new runner in this case as well. And then finally runner I1 here in yellow for a few little yellow accents. And then runner I2 as well for a couple parts here in this kind of light grayish tan color and that's it. So that is everything guys. As you can see a lot of stuff in that box so really think this is going to be a lot of fun to put this kit together. I love a good high grade and this one looks really cool. As always guys a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review. Do check the link to their site down below. You can check out this kit all sorts of other stuff and you can save 10% off everything using that coupon code there. Zacharelius10 it's down in the video description so check that out if you're interested. All right, so here's how it's gonna look when it's all built up. And once again, the full disclosure, guys, I recorded the unboxing uh, months ago and I've had this kit built up and just sitting here waiting to do the review. So I'm sorry that it's been a long time coming. And, but anyway, I, again, I don't think anyone was necessarily waiting for the review, but just wanna let you guys know there's been a long gap between when I actually built the kit and when I'm getting now around to finally reviewing it for you guys. But Either way, I think the kit looks great, although once it is all built up, I do think that it could definitely use a little bit of proportion adjustment to it, because of course it has all the Katoki flair in like the colors and the design. It looks very Katoki, uh, except it doesn't quite have the proportions quite right for like a typical Katoki design. I think the legs could be a little bit longer and a couple other small design changes to the, some of the proportions I think would be necessary to get it really looking its absolute best, but it is definitely going to look a lot better once we get up onto an action base too. Once you can get this up into a flying pose, I think it'll look a lot better proportionally and everything. So let's just first take a quick look at the different accessories and option parts and things like that you have left over other than what you're seeing here for the actual main kit itself. Now you've got a bunch of just scrap leftover parts, so you'll have a lot of these and uh, just, but most notably, you have the full beam rifle here of the regular just Delta Plus as well. So that's just a cool accessory that you can use with this if you want, or you can just give this to some other different custom kit bash or something if you wanted. So it's just so cool that you have all the pieces there for that. And you also have a handful of the parts that are gonna be required for doing the transformation. So some of these parts do also have stickers on them as well as you guys saw on, this, saw on the sticker sheet. It's very extensive. There's stickers all over this. It's a very sticker heavy kit. And then our two shorter style clear pink beam saber effect parts. Again, it's kind of odd to have the shorter style beam saber effect parts, but that's what we got. And of course the beam rifle here for the Delta Kai, which is such an awesome design. I love the design of this beam rifle. It's so cool. The little camera there on the side and just like the way the handle is like that. And it's a very long as well. It's quite a long beam rifle. It comes up to uh, just a little bit over the head height of 
the actual mobile suit itself, obviously not as tall as the fin funnels on the back of there, but still a very long beam rifle. The little option stands here for the funnels, again, they're kind of silly and small and low to the ground, so they're not really going to look all that great, I think, but again, it's, it's something, I guess, to be included. And our massive shield, which is made up of like a few different sections, but this is also really quite cool. This part moves, the, this part moves out here, this is where your beam saber handles are going to be stored as well, you can pull those out of there and of course the gigantic cannon there in that also very cool and this is just going to plug onto the back of the arm there it's going to be heavy no doubt we'll have to see how well the arm can hold up once this is actually attached onto there but i'm assuming we're probably going to have some weight issues without uh, fixing up the joints a little bit and then some pretty nice hand options here we have the closed fists which are not very common for an hg so those that's cool those are included and then just your standard or just regular holding hands and then your trigger finger hand there for the beam rifle as well so some pretty good Good options and before we take a look at some of the articulation I'll just say this kit is quite solid like I said I've had this built up and just sitting in the box for like a couple months and it still feels really really solid and it stands really well on its own despite obviously having a, a, quite a bit going on there on the back of the fin funnels anyway and then the kind of fin bits attached there onto the back but even though it's pretty it's just got like the little simple ball joint there at the ankles you'd expect it maybe to have some trouble there but it still feels quite solid as for the articulation the head will just go up like that so not too bad and then down to there in the torso section nothing really too much as far as forward and back side to side movement here just a little bit of rotation there side to side that's probably gonna be about it for the shoulders they'll move up and then swing forward and back uh, not really a whole lot you do have seam lines down there across the top of the shoulder there also this little fin there on the side will fold down so that's kind of gets out of your way so you can bring the arm up but even still you can only bring the arm up looks like to kind of not even 90 degrees there so not really the best upward movement there in the arm and I think again this is just kind of a lot due to the transformation why the shoulder joint is just kind of suffering from not very good articulation then the arm is gonna work pretty normally here just rotation there at the top single joint there at the elbow giving you a little bit maybe slightly more than 90 degrees but not too much and then the wrist is just on a ball joint there fortunately no other seam lines on here on the arm though as you can see this the seam between these two parts is just made up as the detail there on the arm so the only other seam it's just on the top of the shoulder there, which is a very simple one, it looks like. That won't be too difficult to work out. Down here for the skirt armor, these tiny little bits of front skirt can move, sort of, but they kind of don't really need to. They're too tiny to really do much of anything. These side skirts will also move up and down a little bit like that. And I think they kind of get a little bit lost in the overall design, but I just want to take a moment to appreciate how cool these side skirts are, because they do have a really super cool design. Sort of remind me a little bit of kind of like the back part of the GPO3. Uh, has those kind of like fins going out the back it's sort of similar to that sort of anyway but i really like the design of these as you can see it does have some stickers on there but also purple parts so it's kind of a mix of actual part separation and stickers going around on that but it's a really cool design for that the back skirt as you might expect that doesn't move it's just stuck on there as for like here what's going on on the backpack on the wing bits they do have these little bits which will pop out there like that and then this lower part will also move up and down and then the fin funnels the proto fin funnels can be just removed off there for putting onto the stands. The legs will come out to about that wide, not a ton, but I think it should be probably enough to get some relatively dynamic poses out of that. Uh, and then forward, looks like you can bring the leg up to about 90 degrees, and then you've got a double joint in the knee giving you a pretty good bend there for that. This part of the knee armor doesn't move on its own, it's just kind of stuck there onto the lower leg. But again, really cool detail around on the lower leg of this kit and that knee armor is pretty redonkulous and i'm finding these parts of the backpack like to fall off kind of easily here just off of this they're just held on via poly cap there and it just doesn't really seem all that tight so just be a little bit careful about that maybe tighten that a little bit if you want i don't think it's really going to be a big issue but just letting you guys know about that and then down here at the ankles these uh, ankle armor is just attached onto the foot so that will just move uh, forward and back a little bit up and down I guess I should say and then the foot is just attached via a ball joint there so it's just gonna move around a little bit there on the ball joint but you do also have a little bit of a toe bend here as well you can point the toe down and again it's pretty much just for the transformation but it does make it a lot better for posing getting a nice uh, downward toe bend there is good for some nice dynamic posing and then up underneath the feet no hollow spaces there not really a ton of detail either but it's better than hollow gaps on the underside of the feet I think so that's pretty cool and then last thing here on the back of the leg this little bit does move up and down a little bit but kind of not really too much because it's just kind of blocked by that part but that's also sort of moving there on the back of the leg as well and then of course there's the transformation and here's how it looks transformed and i gotta say i love the transformation of this the uh delta kai the 
Delta Plus, the Delta Gundam, I really love the transformations of these. They're just really cool looking because they don't really look like folded up mobile suits at all. You can kind of see like the legs sticking out the back a little bit. You can see the hands sort of, but other than that, uh, the transformation makes it just look really cool. I love the transformation on these, so um, that's the reason why I got two of these. I don't remember if I mentioned this in the unboxing portion or not, but I have two of this kit. So this one that you're seeing is the one that I didn't put all the stickers on, so not all the stickers are on there, so you're seeing it maybe a little bit more plain looking now. I love the transformation of this so much that that is the reason why I wanted to have two of the kit to have one in mobile suit form and one in wave rider form like this because it's such a cool looking transformation. So really, really like this a lot. It's such a cool look, I think. And it does take a little while to get it all transformed because it's pretty much all just all parts forming. And I know some people don't really like parts forming transformations, but me personally, I prefer it uh, as long as like the actual mobile suit uh, in mobile suit form is, is more stable. I think that's better than having a fully transformable kit that then is just kind of floppy and falling apart in mobile suit form because of all the transformation gimmicks built into it. So uh, I don't mind the parts forming at all. Of course, it is going to leave you with leftover parts in the end that, you know, you don't really have anything really too much else to do with, but I'd rather have that and leftover parts than, again, just a floppy kit that you end up having to glue a bunch of stuff and everything like that. So I think it looks great, it works great, it leaves you with some leftover parts, but it's not that great a loss, I, I think. But all right, as we just finish up checking out a few different poses and everything, uh, a couple of things come to mind. First off, as I just mentioned before, really wish that this came with the larger beam effect parts. So if you have any extras of those lying around, I would definitely recommend giving them to this kit just because like, the design of the kit, I think just the larger, much more impressive beam saber effect is going to look more, a lot more interesting for this design. This small little teeny, teeny tiny one is just kind of not really working for it. Uh, and then just as for the weight issues, yes, the shield definitely does have weight issues just because, especially because like where it plugs into on the back of the elbow is sort of like, is like a hinge sort of, and so it kind of like hangs down. So you have to use that kind of like little purple part that comes up on the front of the shield over there that kind of like hook uh, to rest that a little bit sort of like hook it on the hand there so you'll see in like these different poses there uh, i've got kind of that kind of like resting on the hand that's what's holding the shield like sort of flush but still it is going to be giving you some weight issues for sure that shouldn't really come as a surprise to anyone obviously the shield is massive so you're going to have some weight issues with that so just be aware that it's going to be something you're going to have to deal with with this kit but the beam rifle, which is also quite long, doesn't really give you any weight issues at all. Like I said, the kit actually is pretty solid, uh, so it does hold the beam rifle just fine, even though that's pretty long. It doesn't really weigh a whole lot. Uh, the little effect parts, like the little stands for the funnels, are kind of goofy. You know, I guess like they're like I said before, they're fine, but I um, don't really plan to use them myself personally. Uh, but this overall, just such a super cool design. It's got a couple of seam lines on there, and it's got a load of stickers. So if you want it to be super color accurate, you're in for a lot of masking. Uh, painting this up, but I think at the end of the day it is still gonna just look super cool because it's such a really interesting cool design and whether you want it in mobile suit mode or in the wave rider transform mode it is gonna look really cool either way. Uh, I think it's the kind of kit that looks great as it is but definitely is going to look its best if you are ready to sh put in some work, put in some hours and just uh, make some modifications, doing all the seam line removal, all the masking and everything like that uh, just to really make it look its best with a good amount of love to it, it could definitely look awesome. Now, I would love to see this come out as a Master Grade. Uh, Bandai could make a variant, I think, of the Master Grade Delta Plus to make this. It would be really awesome. Even if it came out as a P Bandai, which is probably likely what would happen, I would be all over that. I would love that. But no, I guess I don't really see that happening, but I think that would be really, really cool if they did. Uh, now, the question I just want to pose to you guys, uh, what are your favorite uh, transforming mecha designs? Uh, I mentioned this and like the Delta Plus being definitely some of my favorites. But what are some transforming designs that you guys are really fans of? Let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, if you have any other questions about this particular kit, you can leave those down there as well. I'll answer those for you. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for shopping at USA Gundam store too. You can check the link down below. Use my coupon code there, Zakarilius10. Save 10% off there, everything there on the site. And I'll catch you guys next time.